Professor of Political Science at Cypress College in LA. Good morning, Professor. How are you? Uh, the COVID situation, well, it's uh, ever changing, but uh, it seems like we've come a long way within the space of two years where uh, the latest phase is seeing death rates not as high. Um, what's the latest in the US? Good morning, Tim. Yes, that's correct. While the infection rates have climbed considerably, the hospitalization rates and death rates are not as high as they were under Delta and other variants. So we've made some progress, but the problem is that we need, we are not getting enough people vaccinated still. You cannot bring about a real significant change in this virus's actions unless you have much more than 62% of the population vaccinated. And that's what we have today. We need to have at least 80 or 90% vaccinated. So that's what people are working on right now, the public health experts. And then the children in schools, their hospitalization rates have actually gone up with this new variant. So Omicron's been more severe on children and many more of them in the hospital than before. A lot has to be done still, Tim. It's a difficult balance, though, isn't it? Um, I've read a lot of uh, papers from psychologists, psychiatrists here in Australia that's saying the balance between not having children at school and having them at home, uh, there's, there's dangers on both sides of the fence, particularly when you're thinking of uh, the state of young people's mental health. Absolutely. It's so important for young people, especially the youngest kids, like my daughter, who's 10, to be able to interact with their, their peers at school and to be able to negotiate and play with them and with conflicts, work out conflicts with them. They learn from each other, Tim, and it's really important, that social interaction, to keep them mentally healthy and balanced. And that's a real problem with COVID. So we have to find a balance. The school should require masking of all the children. They should require childhood vaccinations as well for the, the uh, ages that are, are qualified. And I think the teacher should also be vaccinated. Well, that would keep things much safer and bring an end, an end to this type of horrible uh, pandemic and make it into an endemic problem. Yeah, you and I have mentioned this before. My youngest is also nine and, and the rules have changed in Australia. So like his older brother and sister, he can get his COVID vaccination and he gets it this week. So uh, I think that's uh, a load off a lot of parents' minds who, who really do see the science. Yes, it was a big load off of my wife and I mind uh, in terms of when our daughter got, got vaccinated for a second dose. We were very, very much more comfortable with her going to school. And it is a relief. And I'm glad Australia has done that as well. And you guys are ahead in a lot of other ways, though, in terms of being strict about smashing this virus. I think we need to be a, lot, a bit more like Australia in terms of our public health approach, even in our schools. I think the thing helping here in Australia is there's enormously high vaccination rates, although the numbers are going through the roof. Uh, as you say before, those hospitalisations and the ICU numbers are remaining relatively stable in contrast. Now, uh, let's change subjects because every time I see this vision, it's a year on um, what happened uh, in Washington. Of course, it's, it's a, a year if we can all believe it, but uh, many say it was an insult to democracy, one of the blackest days in the US is history. It really was, Tim, and it uh, was an awful day, a day of infamy. Uh, and this is something that should never, ever happen again. And we have to ask the question, this the January 6th committee in Congress is investigating to see, was there a concerted plot to bring this about? Was it just a random event? Or were there higher-ups that were involved with conspired in order to encourage this? A central question is, what was President Trump doing for three hours while these insurrectionists were havoc, wreaking havoc on the Capitol? Why didn't he call in the National Guard? And now we have emails from his own son and other Congress members begging him to please send the Guard in or send some police or troops, I mean, troops in the Guard, the National Guard would be appropriate to send to stop the rioters from doing what they're doing, which is a total affront, not only an affront to democracy, but also a danger to the people there who are trying to count the vote. Stopping of the counting of the electoral vote. Who is it was behind that? And that itself is it's a seditious act. And whoever was behind that has to be brought in and prosecuted and charged by the Justice Department. So, yes, it was a very dark day. Uh, the pictures are, are woeful. Every time we look at them, they, they look terrible. And uh, we, we think of, of the deaths, and there were a number of deaths, not, you know, not a huge amount, but there was also a lot of injury. And a lot of, a lot of the security and the police are still in rehab uh, trying to get their lives back on track. It was a huge moment. It was a huge moment of tragedy for those who were trying to protect democracy in that capital, the policemen there, the Capitol Police. And they were five, five people died in the whole event, and 140 police and law enforcement were injured terribly, both physically and also some mental injury right now, mental health problems. So that is a question of what is the United States coming to be? What are we as a country now? 
There are two Americas, unfortunately, and President Carter said it very eloquently when he said that, we are on the precipice of an abyss with a widening America in two parts. America that believes in the Enlightenment, that believes in reason and science, and that believes in inclusion, that everyone belongs in America, we're a nation of immigrants, and we honor everyone with human dignity. Another America that says, the nativist America, that says only those who came here first, meaning not even the first people, but the European settlers, are the ones who dominate the country and should. And that's a wrong view. That is not an American view. It is not a constitutional view of our framers, who said that all men are created equal in the Declaration of Independence. All men are created equal. That's the America that we want. And I think that has to be brought back. And, and this is a terrible affront to that image and that vision of America that happened on January 6th. You know what? The, 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 the greatest font of optimism in all of this is probably the next generation, your children, my children, and the way that they think, not only about these kinds of subjects, but about climate change and others. Absolutely correct, because the younger generation uh, are very different than the older ones. Uh, they are much more open to each other's, what they, we offer through different cultural attributes, through our different backgrounds. They are more, uh, believe in dignity and in equality, no matter what ethnicity they belong to. And they all seem to get along quite well. You can see that in the public schools and even some private schools, where children of all backgrounds of different nationalities are coming together in America and and honoring each other and actually just looking that, that we are all human beings, all part of the human family, all part of America. And there's a big encouraging sign with this next generation. I even see it among my college students that I yeah. teach every day. Absolutely. Professor, always good to chat. Thank you, Tim. Pleasure.